Marvel comics are playing up. The fall of X is going to be a big deal. The end of the Krakoan era. And we do have some indications that that might be happening, but Doc and I do have some opinions about that and some ideas of what's actually going to be happening. But first off, we got to talk about the big news. The uncanny Spider-Man reveal is here, and I'm utterly dumbfounded. I don't know what the hell this even means. And here to talk to me about that is Doc. How you doing, Doc? I, I believe that I am marginally less confused on this than you, but um, not really that much. Uncanny Spider-Man is a new five-issue limited series from Legion of X and Nightcrawler's writer Cy Sprayer and Death of Doctor Strange's Lee Garbutt. Set around the events of Fall of X, Uncanny Spider-Man will transform Kurt Wagner into Marvel's new webhead as the hero leads a charge against an anti-mutant organization known as Orcus. I personally love Nightcrawler. He's my favorite mutant character. He's my favorite X-Men, without a doubt. Why is he going to be Spider-Man? Um because reasons that's the best that i can come up with there is absolutely no reason for why he needs to just steal miles morales's costume because that's what it looks like and go running around new york as spider-man guess what none of the spiders have a fucking tail so it's pretty obvious that that's not actually spider-man to anyone with two firing neurons in fictional new york city why he needs to dress up like spider-man in order to take on orcus is utterly baffling to me there at no point here did they create or explain the reason for it so we're just going with because I, b- I believe to? the reason is because they want a Spider-Man comic book that's associated with X-Men for Fall of X. But I feel like they could have picked another character. Kurt Wagner, Nightcrawler, isn't exactly a nobody. He's a member of the, you know, the the the, the second genesis of X-Men. He's one of the most storied characters in the entire history of the franchise. Certainly never been a standalone solo character, but always absolutely vital to the fabric of the X-Men themselves when they've been successful for the most part. Why does he have to act like he's another hero? He's already a hero in his own right. It's not like we don't have enough Spider-Man characters already, and we don't have enough X-Men variant characters already. It's like they just keep going to the exact same well, creating the exact same problem over and over again, and this one's just dumber than normal. At one point, I thought Cy Spurrier was an okay writer, but it's clear he's just a goof. He's a turd, just like you know most of the people working at Marvel right now. He must just be incredibly cheap. That's the only reason he's even there, and this is the best idea he can come up with. Look, he has never been anything more than Dollar Tree Warren Ellis. If they really, really needed a Spider-Man book, look, they've been doing this and hinting at this thing with Sinister and hybrids. They could have done some deep story about a hybrid where Sinister took some of Peter Parker's DNA as well and mixed it with another mutants in order to make it make sense. They're not even going with the obvious things that have been set up and built into this whole Krakoan era. They're just saying, eh, stick curtain Miles' ripped up costume, I guess. This is the exact kind of lacking any sort of creativity that I would expect from somebody as utterly mediocre as Cy Spurrier. He is what a moron thinks a smart writer looks like. We do have some more details. They say escaping the turmoil of Fall of X in a flash of smoke and brimstone. It's time for Nightcrawler to play the swashbuckling devil may care hero. He was always destined to be meeting a potential new lover, battling some of the most iconic members of Spider-Man's rogues gallery and saving civilians, mutants and humans alike. Kurt is having the time of his life, but it's not all fun and games. Nightcrawler will also be a lone soldier on the front lines of mutant kind's upcoming war with Orcus. Throughout the saga, he'll also confront a long-simmering mystery surrounding his mother, Mystique, as Spurrier's bold transformation of the character approaches a startling climax. So the hero he was always destined to be was Spider-Man, and to fight Spider-Man's villains when Peter Parker is indisposed. I just feel like the character is so much more than that. We know that the character is much more than that. He has almost 50 years now of showing that he is much, much more than that. It seems like Cy Spurrier can't figure out what he wants to actually do with Nightcrawler. Does he want to make him a priest? Does he want to make him an atheist? Does he want to make him a pirate? pirate? 
And now does he want to make him Spider-Man? This is not Cy Spurrier's bold transformation of Nightcrawler. This is him just throwing random shit at the wall to see what sticks. This he's is him LARPing or playing D&D with the character where you just throw new power sets onto the character because they aren't fully fleshed out individuals in this fictional universe. You can just do a no skin on. Yeah, that's all this is, is LARPing with existing characters that have decades and decades of continuity, history, characterization, and all those other things that make characters uniquely who they are. I don't feel like anyone in that office, and especially Cy Spurrier, has a fucking clue who Nightcrawler is. He is a somewhat torn character that wants to be a big hero, and so his way of doing it is by slapping on somebody else's costume and pretending to be them. At no point is that something what Kurt would ever do. Kurt, yeah, he wants to be the big hero that everybody knows and loves, but at the same time, he wants to be himself not someone else he wants everyone to love nightcrawler not and i think maybe the most disturbing disturbing information we got out of there doc is now that that science Spurrier is going to go back in the past and recontextualize the history between mystique and in nightcrawler like anybody wants science Spurrier making any long-term changes to any character we already had one retard that pretended to be smart do this in chuck austin when he wrote the fucking draco and decided to do the whole backstory with Azazel and Mystique and having Nightcrawler as a baby and him getting thrown off of a goddamn waterfall. We don't need another idiot pretending to be a smart person to do this. Look, Cy Spurrier wishes he was as competent of a writer as Chuck Austin. And that has a very, very, very low bar. So that's what we got with Uncanny Spider-Man. I was less than impressed. Let's put it that way. And we've also got more indications that this is likely going to be the end of the Kirk Cohen era. It's Fall of X. These are all five-issue miniseries kind of ending at the end of the year. I've also heard rumors that they're going to be rebooting, resetting every single ongoing series they have to number one. Beginning in January, as this is the end of the Kirk Cohen era, this is also what Ed Brisson, who's going to be writing a five-issue Alpha Flight series, said. As for returning for the Fall of X era, it feels like a perfect bookend for my work on X-Men. Having been there for the launch of the new era, it's an honor to come back and help close out the chapter of X-Men history. Basically, they're really setting home that the Krakoan era is over, but you and I know that's not going to happen because all the same writers are still going to be associated with X-Men. They're just not going to be on Krakoa. They're going to put them in a mansion or something like that. And that isn't a new era. That's just a continuation of the real problem. Because Krakoa is not the reason that this era of X-Men absolutely blows donkey dicks. It sucks because the creative sucks. It sucks because Jordan White is the group editor and he's absolutely incompetent and couldn't recognize talent if it fell on his face and flapped around like a fucking fish. That is what is destroying X-Men right now. And there's no way any of this ends. I don't care if they leave the fucking island. It's not getting better. Instead of having gay orgy drug dealing supremacist segregationist plant clone egg orgy island you're gonna have gay plant clone supremacist drug dealing segregationist orgy mansion it's not gonna change anything of any actual consequence none of those other preceding adjectives will go away you're going to have still the same incompetent buffoonery doing incompetent buffoonery things with these characters in this world regardless of the location it's not going to matter you're still going to have a bunch of fools writing these books that don't know anything about the characters that just want to keep changing everything about them kokoa doesn't actually fucking matter at all except for as what the backgrounds are even the character of Krakoa hasn't done shit in like two years in any of these books. So leaving that, is it going to actually change anything of consequence? Yeah, so I, I'm not buying any of this. There's no way that they're going to be able to fix any of this, really until they fire Jordan White and they hire competent editors. Until that happens, the X-Men are just basically screwed. There's no fixing it at this point, Doc. Ed Brisson coming in to do this book. All right, cool. I mean, I like Alpha Flight and all, but him talking about the perfect bookend. Ed, your first six issues that you did in the Krakoan era were shit. They were the bad issues of an already bad 
New Mutants book. You just had a bunch of pink haired hillbillies trying to steal beak. That wasn't an interesting story. So this coming in and being your bookend to it, motherfucker, the front half of this bookend didn't wasn't any good. And honestly, it doesn't even have to be just the editors being moved. It's everyone. You have to. Well, yeah, have a- new editors will bring in new writers. Yeah, except for they're going to have the same Rolodex of the same incompetent fools that the existing ones do because none of them actually have any connections. And none of them are going to be authorized to spend any fucking money. So they're still going to get hired people that are either only going to be working for pocket lint or because they want to write it as their fanfic. Sometimes it feels like I'm their Rolodex. I make a video about why a writer is bad. And next thing you know, they get an X-Men book. It's like, hey, try and spite me all you want. You're just making yourselves look like idiots and killing the sales in your comic books. Well, then I guess Colin Kelly and Jackson Lansing and Clune Rad or going to be lined up as the Hopefully marquee part and megan yeah. fitzmartin will be the new head of x wouldn't that be perfect it would make sense in in this world um you know can't wait to see uncanny x-men by clune rad and um adjectiveless x-men by colin kelly and jackson lansing yes as i mentioned it doesn't matter if they leave Krakoa. there's something wrong with the x-men And it's not Krakoa. It is Jordan White and his cabal of dipshits that are running the show there. Until this incompetent fool is removed, things can never get better. If you haven't seen just how much of an idiot this guy is, definitely watch this video right now. There's also a link in the video description.